Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Speed Boat. And this boat is a lot bigger than you would expect. Next to the D series, it kind of dwarfs it. So if you want to carry this boat around, you need a really big, strong truck like the T series. We're going to go all out with the T75 Patriot Special, and I want to get this thing over into the water. Now, I was hoping that somehow I'd be able to like use the node grabber and attach it to the rear end, but that doesn't work, unfortunately. Like it looks like it would, doesn't it? Like I'm gonna show you, it really looks like you could do this, right? You just kinda bring the truck up, use the node grabber, attach it to the rear frame, and you're good to go, right? Except, boat be heavy. Like I don't know if you know anything about big speedboats like this, but they are surprisingly heavy. This one has a pretty realistic weight, and in game it weighs about 15,000 pounds. So if we want to move this thing over to the water, we need a different strategy. And here's my strategy, okay? Instead of towing the boat, we're going to put the boat on top of the truck. There is no better solution than this. Putting it on a trailer, that's too much work. Then I got to spawn up a trailer too, but this, this works perfectly. I can't believe it's actually staying. It only has to go a little bit, so it might actually make it all the way. You notice the boat's so heavy, it kind of caved in the roof of the truck. So it's holding it like a glove. It makes it nice and stable, surprisingly, as it wobbles back and forth. This is one of the sketchiest looking things I have ever driven. But at the same time, it is working magnificently. So all we need to do is dump it into the water. We got two options. We can try to slide it off the truck and keep the truck alive. Or we just dump the truck all the way into the water and the boat flies off. Excellent. That has launched the boat and we can drive it. That was the cleanest launch I have ever done with this boat. And as you can see, this thing is decently fast. We got it up to about 50 miles per hour. And we're going to do a crash. How do you crash a boat? You find some land and smash it. And now we are just completely submerged. Thankfully, this is a boat. It floats and flies through the air amazingly until that happens. So, uh, we are under... Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're moving. We're moving. Come on. Yeah, we are upside down though. I thought it might go back into the water, but it did not manage to. But we can give it a little bit of assist here. Just grab it with the nail grabber, pull it forward some. It's so heavy, you gotta pull hard. Now it should be in the water, yes. If you're wondering, can you drive with it upside down a little bit? Like we could put down power every now and then, I think when you see the splash, but it's really not enough to actually maneuver it around or anything. So, we'll reset it, and then let's have another crash. So what other things can you crash boats into? Well, in addition to land, you can crash boats into other boats. We just gotta make our way over there. Sometimes driving this is a little bit like driving a car on ice. You slide all over the place, but most of the time, I get to the area I'm trying to go to. So dead ahead, we got the parked boats, and we're gonna smash into them at like 80 miles per hour. This is gonna be a really big hit. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna use some slow-mo here. We're gonna do Let's say 16 times slow-mo. And here we go! Whoa, that was weird. That was weird. Boats are not supposed to do that. Okay, well. So there you can see some actual damage on the boat. It looks really weird when it gets damaged. Like, boats just should not look like this. There's a nice fresh one with no bends in it or anything. It's nice and smooth like a boat should be. So here's something fun. If you've never seen it before, this is what a boat looks like if you try to do donuts with it. It turns out, yes, you can do donuts with this boat, and this is the very first time in my life I have ever seen a boat do donuts, and it's probably the same for you guys too, although you notice, the longer we do donuts, the more chaotic things get. It just bounces around higher and higher and higher and before you know it you're like a torpedo spiraling through the water just bouncing all over the place this complete chaos and all i'm doing is i'm going full accelerator and full steering to the side which causes exactly what you're seeing right now this torpedo motion where it spirals and flies and bounces it's just complete chaos and if you were actually in this boat you wouldn't be anymore you would have fallen out of the boat by now because this thing bounces so much. Enough of that. Let's go ahead and stabilize the boat because it is all over the place. It won't stop bouncing for a minute. We were just so violently thrashing about. Woo! Actually, 
it looks like one of the engines got messed up because they're not pointed in the same direction right now. One of them is all crooked. So that kind of explains why things get so chaotic. So I'll freshen this up and how about we do a high speed run. So if everything's going correctly, you should be able to reach about 120 miles per hour using this boat. And we're gonna try to crash into the island going hopefully around that speed. It's not exactly the easiest thing to do because I need to estimate how far away from the island do I need to drive before I pull back in. And I'm thinking this should be pretty good. So we're gonna do a nice big loopy motion so we can line up with the main island once more and then we're gonna give it all it got and hopefully by the time we make contact we'll be going 120 miles per hour or really close to it. And with there being no waves or anything in the water, this boat is rock solid stable if you're just going in a straight line like this. You can make it tip over if you wanted to going this fast, which I will try to do later on. But right now it's high speed run time and we're gonna go very close to 120 miles per hour. We're gonna go about 115 miles per hour and then there is impact! And it just launched us into the air and then it dove us into the water. What? 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 What is going on? I have no explanation for what you are seeing right now. This makes absolutely no sense. I'm not clicking anything. It's just dancing all on its own and now it's going up flying. Okay. I... I'm speechless. I don't know what in the world that was. I have never seen anything like that before. The boat just said, I have my own physics now. Goodbye, old physics. So I'm going to try to like wait for this thing to stabilize up. And we're going to see, does it still drive or is it done? I see the engine's pointing like straight down. So yeah, it doesn't really drive. I'm trying to give it some gas here and it's just going to go in whatever direction it wants. But you can see the damage at least before we go ahead and reset it. You'd think smashing into something at the front would cause the damage, but nope, it's mostly in the rear. Anyways, we reset, and then we're going to have a little bit of fun. So the goal here is to flip the boat over in the water by just using regular boat driving maneuvers. So I'm not going to crash into anything to flip it over. I'm just going to watch the way it bounces in the water, and I'm going to use that to my advantage to make it flip over. The first thing we need to do is get up to high speeds. To make things easy, you want to go at least 100 miles per hour. And just for fun, I'm trying to keep it as close to the island as I can without accidentally crashing into it. Oh, we're getting a little too close. That was scary. Okay, we're now over 100 miles per hour. So now I just need to focus on getting it to flip over. So we're going to do a really, really hard steer to the left in this little alcove. So right now, we steer hard to the left. And we keep steering hard. And you see the way it's bouncing, we kind of let up. And then it's going to keep rolling and we're flying through the air, bouncing, flipping, and crashing into the trees. And that's how you get a boat airborne into the water so it can fly into some trees. Next up, it's time for something stupid. We are going to carry a car on our boat. So we're going to get a regular old pigeon and stick it on there because that's pretty much the only vehicle that will really fit. And you'll notice when I teleport this onto the boat, it sort of just floats there. So it turns out this boat doesn't actually have an interior with a J-beam. It's basically just a flat ramp on top. So you can't put things inside of it, unfortunately. And while we're on the topic of interior, if you look closely, you can see that it does have a working steering wheel. And then we also have two gauges for the tachometer, one for each engine. You see them moving as the boat slowly goes away. There is an interior camera, but I'm not sure if it'll work when we have a pigeon on top. I think we might just end up inside the pigeon and we won't be able to tell what's going on. So we're gonna just use the outside camera for now. And we're gonna drive around with the pigeon on top and see how well this stays on. It's actually staying on a heck of a lot better than I expected. The parking brake is on, which is probably the only reason it hasn't rolled off almost immediately. But even here, when I'm doing some actual boating maneuvers, it's holding on surprisingly well. Oh, that's getting it. Okay, so once you start going fast enough, you kind of get that bouncing motion. And that bouncing motion is starting to disrupt the location of the pigeon. So we need to slow this down. And with this boat, there is no brakes or anything as far as I can tell. You just let up on the throttle and eventually it'll slow down on its own because of the friction of the water. So that's just from coasting. We drop down to 40 miles per hour. I want to save this pigeon before he falls off. So here's the plan. We are going to beach this boat, and then in the process, we're going to knock the pigeon off 
onto the land with hopefully minimal damage? That's the idea. Will it work? Let's find out. Pigeon, no, you're flying too far. Stop. Stop. Oh, I think it's okay. I can't believe that worked. If that pigeon is actually dry, that is amazing. He's dry. Oh, just barely. That was beautiful. Okay, since we got the boat on the land, I had a dumb question. Can we climb onto the boat using an off-road vehicle? So we're going to get like the off-road version of the D15 and we're going to see, can it go onto the boat? We're going to try to go from this side because it's kind of leaning to this side. So this should be the easier side. But I don't know if this is off-road enough. It's going to be close. Come on now. The bumper's hitting it before the tires are getting anything. So this will not work. But you know what could work? There's a backup plan here. We could try using the custom version of the hopper or even the crawler version of the hopper. This is going all out here. If something will climb this, this will. And I'm even locking the differentials using low gear and just taking it nice and easy. And yep, yeah, there we go. We can climb the boat if we wanted to. I had to know. Now I know. So the next thing I want to do is still going to be at this map, but I want to go somewhere else. So an easy way to do that instead of driving over there is just reloading the map at the area I want to. So let's go to the crossroads. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the boat and we're going to put it on a trailer. Then we're going to drive that trailer across Italy and see how well it works. Now with the length of this boat, we can't just get into ordinary trailer. We need a big fat T-series trailer. And I think this one will be just the right size for the boat. That is excellent. It's just big enough for the boat. And now to carry this big old boat, we're going to go with once again the T-75, but this time it's going to be the long haul special because I'm in it for the long haul. And it's special because how often do I actually haul things? Well, this truck is definitely special in some ways. What is it doing? So put it on level ground, let it kind of bounce around, reset it just in case I ruin the suspension by teleporting it. And now it is ready to attach the trailer. You just got to line it up properly. That should be enough room to back this thing up. That looks pretty good and a little crooked, but the trailer will adjust, right? Come on, trailer. Perfect. And now to get the boat onto the trailer, that should be pretty simple. We're just going to go ahead and teleport it right onto the center. And that looks pretty decent. It's not perfectly centered. It's a little crooked, but it's probably as good as I'm going to get it just using the node grabber. So we are ready to go. And we are going to bring this to the water. And I think the closest water to here, aside from literally dumping it off of the side of a bridge, it's probably just going down the highway because you got a nice flat road you can cruise along without the boat falling off because this is probably going to be pretty top heavy. You know, it's a bit of a lip that we have to clear and I'm just hoping that we can have enough speed to somehow bang our way through there and get into the water. First, we have this corner and it says 30 miles per hour on the sign. Obviously not kilometers per hour, it means 30. So we're going to go 30 through this corner, which is really sketchy. No, bad boat no tipping that was way too fast stupid metric system confusing me and this thing is like half off the bed of the truck we're gonna try something stupid evasive maneuvers did it make it go any more to the right maybe a little bit that really did not seem to help but we're gonna do it again oh that's making it worse oh no 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 Okay, we're going to try this one more time, and if it doesn't look like it does anything, we're going to give up on it. So we go to the right, and then smash to the left. Come on. Ah, it's so hard to tell, because it moves right, and then it just kind of bounces back left, and I don't know if it's really doing anything besides just bouncing the boat all over the place for no good reason. I'm taking this corner very carefully, nice and smooth, but I'm not really slowing down. I'm still going 60 miles per hour with this thing, and it's holding on just barely. Like, if I turn... A little too tight just like that it's gonna start tipping and want to fall off how is it still on I think there's just a lot of weight in the back by the engine so somehow it's able to hang on from that but this is a miracle I'm trying to yank it over back to the right side and that did kind of work sort of it made it where it's just more crooked but it's more centered overall so it's less likely to tip probably and this whole time we're going like 70 miles per hour that's too fast we gotta bring this down to like 60 50 miles per hour that's the safe zone 48, that's around 50, it's close enough. When we get to a corner that goes to the right, I don't have to go slow, that's a nice thing. Because those ones, I can just fly through it and I don't think it's gonna fall off on the right side of me. I only have to worry about the left side, that's the sketchy side. So here's the right corner, but at the same time, we do need to slow down almost immediately after this corner. So we're going as fast as I can, but then we're gonna need to slam on the brakes, get it going slow. 
So what I need to do here, I just need to take a really big wide corner, and then we just need to floor it and see if we can clear the lip down here. So very careful, very careful, and then flooring it, and can we clear it? Come on, come on, T-Series, let's go! Oh, it couldn't clear it. You can see it just smashed into there. That hurts. Okay, well, there is one solution I have to this. It's not exactly an easy thing to do, but it could work. First, we need to bring all three of these guys up off of this lip because they are just in the way, basically, and... I could try to node grabber this, but that's not really going to work. So instead, my solution is going to be just to teleport them all a little bit back up the road. And I know they're not going to be located correctly. And it's going to be a pain in the butt to get them all lined up again. But that should be decent enough. Yeah, it's not too far away. In fact, what we can do is we can go ahead and get the T-Series onto the trailer. Come on, T-Series, back it up. Nice positioning for the trailer. Let's me do a really big, wide sweeping maneuver on this corner. So the trailer is attached. And then for the boat. The boat is at an awful, awful angle. Look at this. It's literally the worst possible angle we could have. It's a perfect 90 degree angle from how I want it. You know what? I would have preferred it to even be pointed the wrong direction compared to this. And oh, now it's inside the trailer too. That's great. Just kind of like try to maneuver it the best I can there. Just like that. That should be good enough. I'm not going to look at it too closely. Just hopefully it balances itself. Yeah, it'll work. It's not pretty, but it'll work. So next, we need to grab the metal ramp. And the cool thing about this metal ramp is you can actually adjust it to be the correct height that you want. So we're going to take this ramp and we're going to place it over here. So we have a smoother transition onto the beach. And then we're going to have to line it up. So again, we got to use some node grabber stuff. This is going to be pretty tedious to do. I'm going to tell you now, this is going to be tedious. You could probably skip ahead a minute or two and you will not miss anything. So all we need to do is we need to line this up. So it's as straight as it can be with the roads and then we need to also adjust the height so I'm opening this up because I know I'll be adjusting the height soon but this thing does not want to stay in position it keeps like sliding backwards every time I let go it looks like it's up butted up against it and then slide back slide back every time so I'll drop this height down just a little bit maybe change the width too so we have some extra room side to side and that now it's all crooked again thank you very much ramp that's exactly how I wanted it I wanted it to be crooked and useless no, sorry, not crooked and useless, straight and useful. So I'll drop the height a little bit more to like 70. And that is probably going to be good, except again, it pulls it back, so there's a gap. So we got to make this as tight as it can be, just like that. That looks pretty good. And now let's see if this is going to work. This corner looks a lot harder than it is since I'm already lined up. I can just take it super wide, just like before, and I know it'll work, even if it looks super sketchy. And then here comes the ramp. Got some slow-mo going so we can really see what happens here. How does it look? It is clearing the ramp just barely. It's scraping as it goes. The rear tires have cleared it. The ramp did its job perfectly. And to put the boat in the water, this is the best plan. We just keep flooring it. We do not let up. Not until the truck is completely hydro-locked. It's completely hydro-locked. Okay, boat, how you doing? boat is doing good we have enough room to clear the truck and that was brilliant although the really violent loading methods where i was using the node grabber definitely not the best way to do things i can tell that this does not want to go straight it's pulling a little bit to the left because i keep having to adjust to go to the right and then it goes left and it's like no go right and i'm gonna go left i said go right so we're going to let this thing beat itself. We're going to be going about 60 miles per hour. So that's a pretty decent speed. And whoop. There we are. On to the beach. Sliding and stopping with minimal damage. That thing actually looked perfectly intact. So we're going to bring this back. And then we're going to change maps. And yes, we are going to take a boat down Leap of Death. How? Well, I have an idea. Let's go to the highest point there is on Leap of Death and drop it from here. I don't know how you would normally get up here, but we are here. And this boat is going down. Uh, one thing I'll notice is this leap of death, the camera goes crazy. It flips upside down. It spins all over the place. I'm probably going to have to do a lot of manual camera work here. And yes, I am accelerating as we go down leap of death. It's like a helicopter. You have blades that are spinning, so it's to make you go faster, right? Who knows? And I know the camera sometimes does kind of get into a spinning motion you're seeing. That's not as bad as it gets. 
That is an acceptable amount of confusion and chaos until it gets really bad. Like this is starting to get really bad, but the second you crash, it's okay. You gotta wait until it's always spinning. Once it seems like it's gonna always spin, that's when you do the manual camera. Like here, there, it's getting into its death spiral. There is nothing that's gonna stop it from spiraling out of control now, so all we can do is just watch from afar. Like I really wish there was some sort of alternative camera where it doesn't really care about the rotation of the vehicle it just says watch the vehicle from this orientation so i can say you know be 10 feet back on the north side of the vehicle and it just did that and the point of the vehicle would just be you know like somewhere in the center or something would have some smoothing obviously but just something like that would be really nifty for a situation like this anyways the boat's stuck and it's a boat it has to get to the water so we're just do a little bit of cheating here. We'll just teleport into the water like so. And there we go. The boat has made it to the bottom. And now it's going up into the air. It's just going to bounce all over the place. And I can give it some gas and we can just watch it bounce all over the place. So even though I dropped it down leap of death, it is still able to float like a boat. It just can't accelerate at all because the engines are pointed in who knows what direction. And the physics of the boat are making absolutely no sense at all. It's just kind of bouncing all over the place, spiraling all over the place. But I think that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike, what is this? <laughs> I told you it works like a helicopter. and It is moving. I am trying to just follow it. It's actually outspeeding me, and I'm doing the faster than normal camera. Like, look how high up we already are. And look how far it is. Wow. Okay. Um, never seen this before. Not with the boat. I've seen it with a lot of vehicles. For some reason, this loves to happen to me, where vehicles just decide they're going to fly straight up in the air for no good reason. What a wacky situation. It's finally slowing down a bit, so we're able to catch up to it, but it's still accelerating up into the air. And you can see, we are way up here. This is higher than where we started. We are flying through the air. So I have one little curiosity here. If we let up on the gas, does that actually make it fall? Or is it just going to keep going forever? So the gas is dropping, but it's still going in the air. The speed is dropping. So maybe once the speed gets low enough, it'll come back down. Uh, yep, there it goes. It's dropping down. Anyways, as I was saying, until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how the boat flies through the air. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.